So you don't mind talking about what Valve's working on? Um, are there any new Valve games coming out soon? <laughs> I'm sure there are. <laughs> yes, we definitely have games in, in development that we're going to be announcing. Uh, uh, it's fun to, to ship games. You know, uh, Alex was great to be back doing uh, single-player games. That created a lot of momentum inside of the company to, you know, to 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 to, to do more of that. And and in this vein, I mean, there's uh, the name Citadel that's being thrown around. Uh huh. Is that a thing? It's a name. <laughs> Is it a thing you're working on? Uh. I, we have a bunch of code names. Are you is it, are you referring to a code name? That, I think it's a code name. Yeah. yeah, no, I don't know what Citadel is. The largest Citadel leaks we've ever seen happened the day this interview went live. <laughs> In an interview conducted by Luke Appleby on One News of New Zealand, effectively the New Zealand equivalent to NBC or the BBC, Gabe Newell was interviewed and discussed his time in the country following the pandemic. The interview covered brain-computer interfacing, virtual reality, esports, moving Valve to New Zealand, and a few other very Gabe topics. Appleby did push his luck with the normal bevy of Half-Life 3-esque questions, which hit differently in a post-Half-Life Alex world. There are a few problems with this interview, and it's nothing that Appleby did. I think he specifically threaded the needle with a person legendary for giving difficult and closed off interviews. Instead, I feel like this interview shows how the greater gaming landscape has a misunderstanding of how Valve actually operates. First, and obviously, every game news organization wrote the same article following this interview's airing. It only takes one organization taking note of an event, and everyone will follow suit and copy each other. Case in point, this interview was live for over a day before the first media outlet picked up on it. Second, the fact that Gabe Newell said that Valve has games in development isn't headline news for multiple reasons. Reasons. Gabe said the exact same thing a few weeks ago in a call with Jeff Keighley, which everyone reported then on as well, and it was also stated in the final hours of Half-Life Alex, almost verbatim. Also, Gabe doesn't actually make games for Valve anymore. Gabe has almost nothing to do with the day-to-day -day production of Valve software. He's effectively a figurehead. The fact that Gabe said Valve has games in production right now means nothing, as it's always been true from the time Valve first started business in 1996, and that even includes the dark times. Just because Valve has games in production doesn't mean any of those games are actually going to release. And this is never stated by any of the organizations that have picked up this single quote for massive clicks. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about Citadel. What is likely going to be Valve's next game has been leaking over the last few months. It all started off with a quote at the end of the final hours of Half-Life Alex. Jeff Keighley wrote, quote, others wonder if more VR games might be in the future, as Valve continues to push further into the VR hardware space. Maybe there will be surprises as well, including a top secret new project that another small team at Valve has been working on since the first part of 2018. A few reports followed from this channel. But to recap, our basic understanding of Citadel is that it's an asymmetric VR PC crossplay game with a tiled map somewhere in the mix. Instanced games, like a multiplayer game with player leveling, firearms, and puppeteering of different types of deployable bots from players' inventories. Exactly how these pieces of a puzzle fit together has remained a mystery, though we've been given many clues in the last few days. In an update to Dota 2 pushed on the 19th, coinciding with the announcement of the Dota Pro Circuit 2021, behind the scenes movements were made to bring the CSGO Overwatch system into Dota 2. The Overwatch system, for those unaware, is a demo recording and submission feature that allows allows volunteer CSGO moderators to observe in-game recordings of alleged cheating. With the upcoming stay-at-home tournament almost upon us, it would make sense that Valve would see value in getting this system operational for Dota 2 ahead of time. One of the changes for Dota 2's iteration of the system is an updated demo format made in-engine specifically for Source 2. This new demo system keeps track of individual finite variables for the game being recorded, and according to the files pushed within this update, the Source 2 team is planning on using this demo system in all known Source 2 projects, including Half-Life Alex, Artifact, Underlords, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and Citadel. Each of these titles has a listing on the file. Wait, oh, CSGO and Citadel? Okay, what happened here is strange. Either Valve is starting to become very incompetent with what we've been seeing from them, or... And the, the point of the information dump here is where we basically want to ignite speculation in the community. So we want the community playing the update in some fashion up until the point the update actually hits the product. And so we're going to deliberately craft things for them to do. The first thing we're crafting for them to do essentially is speculate about what's in the update. You know, if you're the person 
person who sees the connection that, you know, in this latest update to something that was teased two months ago or something in some other update, you get to win the internet, right? You're the person who saw the connection. Uh, there are videos on YouTube with hundreds of thousands of views today that, that cover the two years of hints that led up to our eventual release of the man versus machine update. But not all of our communication is going to be that deliberate, obviously. Sometimes we, you know, will always accidentally ship localization strings or textures or models or a sound we didn't mean to, mean about, so on. It's not dangerous. In fact, it turns out to be really, really helpful. And the moment they first discover something in one of your, you know, somewhere in your files that you didn't intend to release that then matters in a later update, they've realized they need to do that with everything. So they're going to pull apart everything you ever ship. Cruise every XE for, for strings, they pull apart all of our textures and so on, and they live stream this to usually tens of thousands of viewers as they examine the, the details of every update we ever ship. So the community has fun with that, and of course what we get out of it is we get a bunch of information about what the community thinks of something we haven't yet finished yet, we haven't shipped. And sometimes this is critical. There was a file leaked in this update that describes all parameters for demos recorded in Source 2, with variables for each of the titles the demo system will work for, including the unreleased Source 2 port for CSGO and the unannounced codename Citadel. This file was last edited only a few days ago and is purposefully hugely incomplete. Meaning, somebody went in and made sure the real secret stuff wasn't in the file before they shipped. Pushing this file would have required many people on the team knowing of its existence, and my speculation is that it was likely pushed on purpose. Valve has a history of leaking information to the community in order to communicate indirectly on what they are planning. Most legendarily, with HL3.txt back in October of 2015, communicating a then recently canceled version of Half-Life 3 to the greater gaming communities in order to get opinions on specific features they may want to reuse in other projects. This file communicates a lot. The variables in question are specific to Citadel and describe some of the major mechanics at play within the game. This was originally discovered by Xpop, a co-creator of SteamDB, and the administrator and creator of the SteamDB GitHub diff checker, the place that makes data mining all of Valve's updates incredibly easy. Go follow him on Twitter and send some support his way. He's awesome. Anyways, according to both the leaked demo file and the DLLs from the entire update itself, players have both primary and secondary ammo. The types and amounts of which the player has and starts with can be controlled by both the game's parameters and console commands. While the amounts of types of ammo on display here have yet to be defined, it is a core feature of the player's inventory. Players have both abilities and a subclass, with the abilities being equipable throughout gameplay and the subclass seemingly picked at the beginning of a round of Citadel. The movement of some of the players appears to be far more vertical than ever before seen in Half-Life, with mantling, leaping, and hurtling states, types, and definitions present within the engine update. I would guess that these are for non-VR players, as Valve does not like moving VR players much to begin with, but it would be a dream to see them go further if they have changed their minds. The camera and mapping system seen within the game seem to incorporate many play types, including a spectator's perspective. Minimaps, follow mode for player cameras, and the camera movement speed are all being defined here. A system plastered all over the update, also seen in previous leaks, is NPC mood types. We have definitions for types, layers of moods, animation blending between moods, mood animation buckets, which means held groups of animations for both listening and talking NPCs, timed animations based on player actions, types of moods for both the head and body for NPCs, and a single defined mood definition called Zen Depression. Now, according to an unearthed leaked from an artifact update from October of last year, quote, check for this cloth vertices that need to collide with the ground. Currently, different games set up different ground colliders. Citadel has no ground collision, Dota has height maps, and Half-Life Alex uses a probe to find the floor plane, end quote. Citadel doesn't seem to require ground collision, and I have no idea why. Players also have some mechanically defined abilities within these leaks, such as the ability to outmaneuver a critical hit from an attacking source, and the ability to skin the flesh off of enemies. The update specifically refers to alien and bloody flesh as inventory items. Now, as published in a US patent on January 12th of this year and originally filed a year before, Valve has defined a virtual reality headset with built-in augmented reality functionality. The patent reads as follows, quote, the disclosed AR system also allows for augmenting a single player video game with various multiplayer aspects. This may be accomplished without having to overhaul the code for the single player game in order to make it a multiplayer game. To enable such multiplayer aspects, client machines may exchange data over a computer network. By way of example, this 
this technique may allow for adding speedrunning to an otherwise single player game, whereby the first player using the first client machine sees an AR avatar of the second player's game character that is overlaid onto the video game's contents of the first player's video game." End quote. Now, part of the One News interview with Gabe Newell was a discussion as to why the Valve Index was constantly out of stock, to which Gabe said, quote, we actually have components that are manufactured in Wuhan, and when you're setting up your manufacturing lines, it doesn't occur to you that you're suddenly going to be dependent on this particular transistor that's sitting on one board that you can't get. Everyone ended up running into the same problem simultaneously. You go from, oh, we're in great shape, to what do you mean Apple or Microsoft just bought the next two years of supply so that they just don't run out? You went from a situation where everything was going to be done in time to people buying up all available supplies. So the only thing keeping us shipping a new Zealand at this point is just getting enough of them made. We're very much manufacturing constrained." End quote. The only known way to alleviate this situation anytime soon is to rebuild the headset using more obtainable components, and if Valve needs to do that in order to get more headsets in the hands of users, why not update the entire system and bring new features to the fold? The basic concepts of Citadel were born out of Jerry Ellsworth's augmented reality team back in 2013, then being based around a Left 4 Dead game. We took Left 4 Dead and we hacked it apart and took the director out of it and we were using a wand and we were dropping letting one person sit on the couch while someone else played on the tv and the person on the couch um, sitting next to him was dropping health packs and zombies into the map while their friend played on the tv it was insanely fun and uh it's like, yeah, this is the future right here. And lastly, CSGO's Source 2 port is still in the works, according to this leak. Which means, if you've made it this far in this video, congratulations, you get yourself a secret CSGO report. According to the information I've collected over the pandemic, COVID made the team take a break from all of the work on the CSGO Source 2 port, because although the port was playable and workable, it was very buggy, as the engine port would likely be. This meant that, as large-scale in-person playtests were now impossible, so too was the work on the port. That said, this leak shows that maybe they figured something out, and alongside it comes with some new leaked features to Source 2 as a whole, including working water shaders, which up until this point have never existed, at least according to this tweet from a former Valve developer. Quote, my son is playing around in Steam Home in one of the environments I built, and he's making comments about the odd water physics. I don't have the heart to tell him that it's 100% hacked in the editor because Source 2 had no working water, end quote. Also leaked is VR screen shake support, mechanical wind systems, virtual reality foveated rendering, and most interestingly, RTX support. Any, none, or all may make their way into CSGO's Source 2 port, which I predict will be out within the next two years.